Welcome back everyone to another installment of Space News with me, the Monday show in which I keep you in the loop on all the latest Starship updates, launches from the past week, as well as all the other cool stories that took place in the world of spaceflight. We have another busy one today from Starship News, SpaceX's first launch out of the 100 they're aiming for this year, and much more. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, the world's number one recipe box delivery service. More on them later on, but first, let's talk about Starship. I want to begin by talking about the first Starship orbital flight test. When it launches, Starship will become the biggest and most powerful rocket ever launched, with the highest ever payload to orbit capacity of any rocket that came before. When those 33 Raptor engines ignite, the vehicle will produce over 3,000 metric tons of thrust, and that's a lot of force for the clamps to hold down. But on the other side of things, the fully fueled Starship Super Heavy will weigh approximately 4,500 metric tons, and that's a lot, almost double the mass of Saturn V. All of this means that those little clamps inside the orbital launch mount are going to have to be able to withstand a lot of weight when it comes to fueling up a Starship Super Heavy stack and, of course, launching said Starship Super Heavy stack. Remember that although we've seen full stacks before, as early as Booster 4 and Ship 20 in fact, we've never seen these things fully fueled up. Only a single booster fully fueled, so these clamps have never been tested to the level of stress that they will ultimately need to be subjected to. Do you remember when the chopsticks were first installed? Of course you do. You're smart. You watch Space This Week, and remember to always like the video, subscribe and ring the bell to support this content. <laughs> but yeah, when the chopsticks were first installed, SpaceX didn't use them for ship or booster stacking right away, and continued using cranes for a bit. This is because that while the designs would have inevitably been tested with computer modeling, simulations don't always represent the real world. Welding errors or imperfections in the materials used are examples of things a simulation might not account for, so SpaceX used mass simulators to test the chopsticks, using their giant balls of water to simulate the Starship and Super Heavy masses. And of course, the mass the chopsticks need to support is vastly lower than that of the clamps, so it's not unsurprising that SpaceX want to assess the clamp mass load capabilities prior to full stack, full fuel, 33 engine static fire testing. Enter this thing that Starship Gazer caught some photos of. This is a load spreader designed to test the clamps of the orbital launch mount. You can see this piece here perfectly matches the clamping surface rim seen on the Super Heavy boosters, and the whole rig is the same width as the Super Heavy. And we can assume that there's a similar clamping surface on the other end of this bar. Ryan Hansen Space created an excellent 3D render showing how this will work. It'll fit into the orbital launch mount, clamping to two clamps at a time, and it'll use pistons to lift these weights, which will be moved under the pad. These weigh a total of 500 metric tons, which will be supported across one of the 10 pairs of clamps at a time. Now this isn't a lot, but remember this is just one pair of clamps. There are 10 pairs in total, and 500 times 10 is 5,000 metric tons, more than the weight of the fully fueled Starship rocket. So this rig will test to the clamps to beyond what they will be subjected to with a fully fueled Starship. And as for payload, eventually Starship's payload to low Earth orbit is expected to be 100 tons. So provided this test is a success, the clamps should be able to hold a fully fueled, fully laden Starship vehicle. As of Saturday last week, it appears that one complete round of testing has been completed. All 10 pairs have been put through pull-up testing. SpaceX are showing no sign of stopping tests yet though, so it's not clear how long these tests will last, but hopefully not too much longer. I like how this test will be using some standard counterweights that SpaceX use for the self-propelled transports and the cranes. In general, I've always loved how SpaceX can adapt and repurpose. A classic example of a little easter egg at Starbase is the bar area. The awnings here are the body flaps of the Starship Mark 1, which to me is so cool. I bet they serve amazing food there as well, far better than anything you or I could cook. Without HelloFresh, that is, the sponsor of today's video. I'm a level with you guys, I love cooking and learning new recipes, but the big thing I hate about it is the fact that so many recipes you find online need so many ingredients and I don't have a big kitchen. Let's be real, how many times am I going to use pandana sleeves? My cupboards are pretty full, so I can't really be buying a billion things every week, and that's why I love HelloFresh. They deliver everything you need to create fantastic and healthy dinners from scratch, and by giving you only the exact amount of ingredients that you need, no food ends up going to waste. Another thing that isn't wasted is your hard-earned cash. HelloFresh works closely with trusted suppliers to help you save. And did you know that HelloFresh helps you save money all year round? In fact, HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. And it's a lot healthier than takeout too. 
HelloFresh's latest line of meals features robust flavors and filling portions, which can be prepared in under 15 minutes. Enjoy taste and quality done quickly with a fantastic range of recipes to choose from. You've got New Year's goals and HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGMATJAN21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases and let HelloFresh know that I sent you. Eat healthy, save time and hone your skills in the kitchen. It's a win-win-win. Anyway, back to Starship news. Anyone with megalophobia, look away now. Starbase surfer captured a Boca Chica house with Ship 20 in the background. How's that for a sense of scale? Okay, a lot of this is down to the depth of field used, but still, an amazing sense of size there. Just like this photo, look at this massive statue in Japan. I promise I'm going somewhere with this, by the way. <laughs> this statue is pretty otherworldly looking, and coincidentally, it's around the exact same height as the Starship full stack. Imagine seeing something this big launching in front of you. Or take the Dublin Spire. Again, it's the same height as Starship, and it's massive. I just wanted to show you these pictures as examples of Starship's true size, because I think it's sometimes hard to grasp just how massive these vehicles are, because there aren't really any points of reference next to them. Seeing similarly big things next to more recognizably sized things helps my monkey brain visualize things a bit more easily, so maybe it helps you as well. <laughs> yeah, those super heavy boosters are definitely big, all right. Look, there's one of them now. Lab Fadre captured this footage of Booster 10's methane section being moved from the mega bay to the mid bay on Thursday. It couldn't be moved to the high bay because that's full of Ship 25 and the mysterious Ship 26, the first Starship tanker prototype that doesn't have any heat shielding or body flaps, and the reason Booster 10's methane tank and needs to be moved was to hopefully make way for booster 7. Yes, we hopefully are now on the final approach to orbital launch. Provided the launch clamps can pass the mass testing, everything is now looking very close to ready for the first orbital launch attempt. Here's hoping SpaceX don't face any other setbacks. Expect the next major test to be a full stack wet dress rehearsal. In terms of when the launch will actually take place, Elon tweeted that SpaceX have a real shot at late February, but a March launch attempt appears highly likely. So take that for what you will. It's Elon time. Don't know if it's accurate, but it does seem like there's not much more left to do on the checklist before the orbital launch can take place. What do you think? Is this another Elon overestimating? Or do you think March will be the time that we actually finally see the Starship launch? Let me know in the comments. Rewinding to the aforementioned Ship 25 and Ship 26 photo, Ship 26 used to be behind Ship 25 on the welding turntable, and now it looks like all significant welding has been completed, as the ship was moved off the platform and placed alongside Ship 25 for installation of all the final minutia, such as raceways and final structural components. As for Ship 25, it it looks like its payload bay door cover has been lifted into place. In a similar vein to Ship 24, this vehicle initially had a functional payload bay door and was expected to carry Starlink V2 satellites to orbit, or at the very least boilerplate versions of these satellites. But for whatever reason, SpaceX has now decided against this and is welding the door shut, either because of the fact that they don't feel confident in either the payload bay door system itself or the Starlink PEZ dispenser mechanism. Now here's a sight we don't see very often these days. Ship 28's common dome was flipped outside of the Star Factory building on Tuesday. Since the completion of the first phase of the Star Factory, all flips have been happening out of sight in this building. But maybe things are getting a bit congested in there, as Lab Padre streams caught the flipping of Ship 28's common dome, all exposed and out in the open. With this move, all three of Ship 28's domes have been flipped and sleeved. Now, I just want to make a small correction to last Monday's episode of Space This Week. I erroneously said that Booster 9 hasn't had any tests done yet. I'm not quite sure how I missed the cryo testing that took place on the 29th of December. <laughs> we saw partial filling of its liquid oxygen tank as part of its cryoproofing campaign before seeing a D-tank, followed by an almost complete filling of its liquid methane fuel tank. Another successful round of testing there at Starbase. Over in Florida, it looks like the carriage that moves the chopsticks up and down the launch tower has been moved to the launch pad at Site 39A. This is hopefully a good sign that installation of the catch arms is now imminent at Cape Canaveral. Speaking of Cape Canaveral, we had another successful Falcon 9 launch from Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral on Tuesday last week. 
This was another small sat rideshare mission from SpaceX, the Transporter 6 mission. These transport missions don't just host one or two large payloads, but instead carry a massive number of satellites that are much, much smaller. For this mission, the Falcon 9 carried a whopping 114 spacecraft to orbit, which were deployed across 82 total deployment points. This was the 15th launch and landing for this particular Falcon 9 first stage booster, which previously supported the launch of GPS-33, TurkSat 5A, Transporter 2, Intelsat G33, G34, and 10 Starlink missions and she's certainly showing her age. That is one sooty booster. <laughs> I guess it's kind of hard to tell this on the launch pad because of all the frost, but because the transport missions don't land on the drone ships and instead return to the landing zone, we got some excellent third-person views of the booster coming into land, and what spectacular views they are. The lighting and weather was perfect for this flight. This is definitely one of the best-looking Falcon 9 launch and landing videos that we've ever seen. And if we weren't spoiled enough for views already, SpaceX went a step further and shared this video on Twitter. This is an onboard view from the booster for its entire journey. Lovely stuff there. Among the payloads were two Ion space tugs from Italian firm D Orbit, which will carry a number of spacecraft and hosted payloads for customers. Another space tug on board was the Orbiter SN1 from Launcher Incorporated, which sports an ethane and nitrous oxide propellant system, and the tug carried a variety of customer spacecraft. Eventually, Launcher Incorporated hoped to fly their very own launch vehicle, but this is still being worked on. And there we are! Falcon 9 touchdown in the background there. <laughs> It was kind of a quiet one for launches last week, not gonna lie. The Transport 6 mission was the only orbital launch that we saw. Luckily, there was a bunch of Starship activity to make up for this though. And maybe there were lots more virtual launches than normal last week. Kind of tenuous segue to say that if you don't already own it, then the game Kerbal Space Program, you may have heard of it, is currently free on the Epic Game Store. Definitely pick that up if you've not got it already. I want to mention quickly to not be put off by the Epic Game Store. Truthfully, I don't usually get the free games on Epic because I don't want to have to deal with another separate launch on my PC, but Kerbal Space Program doesn't have DRM, so you don't need the Epic Games launch to play it once you own it. So yeah, pick it up while you can. This deal lasts until the 12th of January. In Artemis news now, check out these shots. Pictured here are NASA technicians at the Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans, moving the liquid hydrogen tank of an SLS rocket for white light scans in preparation for the next steps in the manufacturing process. This tank will be used for Artemis 3, one of the first crewed Artemis missions to the moon. The tank will hold over 2 million litres of liquid hydrogen, which is about the same capacity as 23,000 Ford F-150 fuel tanks for Americans watching, and it'll be chilled to minus 222 degrees Celsius and is the largest of the five elements that'll make up the rocket's 65 metre tall core stage. Artemis 1 was definitely a highlight of 2022, so I'm super excited to see another SLS launch. But now I must turn your attention to the wonderful names on screen that I need to give a huge thank you to. They're my Patreon supporters and channel members, and it's thanks to their generous support that I can continue making these space news videos for you all. If you want to sign up, I always do appreciate it. Links can be found down below and on screen. In addition to two other suggestions from my channel that YouTube thinks you'll like, hopefully they're good picks. But guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. We have a Planet Coaster video on Wednesdays. Check that out if you want to. And that's it. Goodbye.